Okay. So, then I can ask you, what was the inspiration for the film? Um, life and life. You know, my, uh, look, the movie's about death in some ways. So every time this question comes up, I say, like, my dad died. But the movie, in a lot of ways, is, like, about kind of what happened after that, which has very little to do, actually, with the physical event of him dying and more to do with the feeling of, like, life racing ahead afterwards and kind of not being able to catch up to your own life. And I remember these, you know, early conversations of ours about this feeling that I had very strongly that I thought was cinematic of, like, you can make a movie that feels like that. You can make a movie that feels um, like the kind of messy, propulsive, unresolved violence of life. And so we kind of set out to make a movie that could catch all that feeling and organize it in such a way that would make it narrative, make it allowed to be kind of expressed to other people that weren't, that wasn't me. Yeah. Sure. So did you come up with the concept and then bring it to him, or did you guys both kind of collaborate it from the beginning together? Well, uh, Russ had uh, uh, made a short film at Columbia University where I teach filmmaking, and I was his thesis advisor. So. I saw it from when it was a script, and then in the edit room, and then as a film, and then it went on and had really great success, and um, I've told anybody who ever asked me, I thought it was the best American film in the last 10 years, and I still stand by that. And um, so it, 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 it wasn't um, the more formal ways that, movie get, get, that movies get made, it didn't have that process. It was, hey, what if those characters were in a feature, and what would happen to them, and uh, can we take the 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 kind of little DNA of those characters and now grow it in a petri dish so out of the sides of the petri dish so that it's big and expansive and things we didn't know about or that Russ didn't know about when he wrote the short now you know become a three-dimensional world and that so it, it had that it really emerged slowly over many years okay. and I, I remember there being like I because someone asked about this earlier and I, and I remember this and I think it's Good, which is, I remember there being this early cut of like, or like the idea of an early cut of like a man at a party with his family slamming up against an image of him in a hospital bed in a living room. And the feeling of that cut, the kind of jarring nature of change, felt to me like where the movie could live. And that's I what, think that's yeah. what the start was. Yeah. Okay. So there's kind of an aspect of really bickering realism. Well, maybe the way I would answer that is to say that um, the ways in which death is has been handled in cinema okay. is always so, you know, uh, careful and there are symbols and if someone's hand goes like this, we know, oh, Papa's dead and people say, don't you die on me and, you know, um, Russ's dad had died and then right before we began, literally before we began working together, my dad uh, went into a coma and then died and Russ and I were working on the script at a Polish restaurant outside the Rusk Institute where my dad was dying. So we are sort of fresh with all these, like the real things that happen, the real things that get said and the unbelievable kind of hidden nature in both movies and in life that death has. Like, you know, nobody sees it happen anymore. It's always someone comes and tells you in a sanitized room, in a sanitized speech. And I didn't see that. I saw lots of stuff, and Russ, even more, had been just affected by a part of life that no one wants to talk about. I auditioned for the role of Karen, who is a friend of Andy McDowell's character, um, and we work at the same upstate college in New York, um, at the theatre department in a, in a school. And um, Karen sort of threaded through the movie as a friend of the family throughout this big event that happens to them and how they all cope with their grief. And uh, you see her at these various meals that Russ puts together of family events, and you sort of she's kind of sewn That's through them. Yeah, she pops up. She's a sort of integral part of their lives, although she's not in the family herself. Sure. Yeah. So how was it working then with Andy McDowell? Oh, beautiful. It's just great. Everybody was so 
good at just dropping into the, it was very improvisational so we do we'd have these big meal scenes and we set them up there were certain lines that had to be um, hit and then we Russ would say okay I think you should just talk about X and the first few days was like what what do you mean no script and then you would totally fit into it um, Chris and James are so good at that kind of thing <clears throat> probably from a comedy background but then after a while you just sit into it and say well, what's the conversation going to be today and it, you get these meal scenes that start the beginning of the meal and then you see the end of the meal or you might see the middle of the meal and it's it, it just spread out over a span of time and it's it's a really beautiful thing great and how are yeah. you getting to develop that relationship with this character centered during it over a period of time yeah it's it just comes like anything it comes with the time that you spend and sometimes you get a little amount of time sometimes you just get two three days in a row and of course that feels better because you spend time with everybody and um, in the end it looks like a very cohesive extended family which is what we felt like so it's been it's been great Do you play and what you liked about playing her? I guess, what did you, what did you relate to anything about? Oh, yeah. Um, I play Rebecca Harper, who's a book publisher in New York, and she's in love and with Chris O'Dowd's character. And I just, I, I really fell in love with the character in the script because it, it sort of resonated a lot with me this idea of being in a couple with someone and that thing that happens when you're with someone for a while and you both start questioning whether you should be together, and ultimately, you probably should, but. It's sort of about the absurdity about what happens when someone loses a loved one and everything goes haywire. So I, I, I just love the script and I, I just, she's a really strong, sort of powerful woman, but she's also quite vulnerable and I like that. I sort of think that's good that we're seeing more women like that in film. Sure, and do you think that's important to feel like this too, where you have a number of characters who are, you know, female characters in leading roles in yeah, complex? Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, the, 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 what's so amazing about this film is the male roles and the female roles are equally strong throughout, and they're all very unique. And um, to have Andy, Andre, and me, to have three sort of female heroines in the movie is kind of amazing. It's unusual, it's normally male heavy, and so it's very balanced. It's a real ensemble piece. Great. Well, I'm so excited to see 